When it comes to managing apps in Intune, we're spoiled for choice. I've reviewed most of the options here on this channel already, and Packager is no different. My first video on this solution was over a year ago, so I wanted to come back and see what's new, and there's quite a lot new. I've spun up a new environment and set up a trial, but I wanted to go through uh, exactly how it works again, just in case you haven't seen that other video. We'll jump into the portal. So dashboard, very, very clean, nice and easy to use. We essentially see how many devices we've got available to us within the trial. And right now I've got up to 2,500 devices available to use Packager on. This is actually detected automatically. When you set up Packager and, and uh, authenticate with the correct permissions, it will check how many devices you have. That includes Windows and Mac devices. And it will uh, essentially let you know how many you've got. I've only got 10. I've got a small lab environment here, but that's exactly what I'm going to be using to test with. So you'll notice the tiles I've got right in front of me. I've got App Library, My Company, Logs and Teams. There are some more that we'll go through in a moment. I'm going to start with my companies because I set up a company when I started this trial and it's uh, the company's called Last Coffee. It's connected to Intune. It's all up to date and it's, 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 it's working. And you'll notice that I could add a second company. This is multi-tenant, right? You can have as many companies as you need. So a company would be an Intune environment. For me, I only have the one Intune environment that I want to use with Packager, but let's see how it works. Now, it's really quite simple to get started. We go to the app library and we'll uh, just take a quick look at some of the apps that I've got already published in my environment. So I've got, I've got Audacity, I've got 7-Zip, Handbrake, Edge, VS Code, Firefox, Notion, Elgato Camera Hub. You'll notice there's a mix of macOS and Windows applications here. It supports macOS and that mind blowing for me that a solution is as slick as this and as cloud-based as this and as easy to use as this supports deploying Mac OS applications. I'm going to start with that actually because it is um, it is incredibly easy to do. We'll go to add new app. I'm going to choose from Windows. I'm going to go down to Mac OS which is in beta but it's, it works very well. And here, they, here are all the applications. You'll notice the scroll bar is quite long. It keeps adding as I go down. So it's, it's, uh, it, it is quite a lot of applications. Let's say, for example, I wanted to do, uh, let's go a bit further, Slack. We'll add in Slack. So I'll choose that. It says the application is ready for deployment. Great. And we'll also do, let's do TeamViewer. Actually, I don't think I've got that one yet. Okay. So it says a waiting deployment and a waiting deployment. Now, how do we get that into Intune, you ask? Well, we choose the three dots, we choose deployment, and then we uh, can choose deploy to Intune. Before we do that though, notice one other thing. It says update only as an option. So I could tick this box here or this slider here, which will make it an update only application. What on this does that mean? Well, let's say you've got a load of, organ a load of uh, applications in the environment, um, and you know that some people have installed TeamViewer, but not everyone uses TeamViewer. Maybe you just want to make sure it's up to date. For everyone who has TeamViewer installed on their computer, you want to make sure it's up to date. But you don't want to actually deploy TeamViewer to every uh, device in the organization. And that actually is a, a real problem. It's quite a tricky thing to solve. You need to detect whether the app is there and then push the, um, the application update. And that I've seen solved in many different ways. You could use a group and do some scripts at proactive remediation or something to detect whether the app is there before you target. Or what Packager does is it actually lets you deploy it to all devices that you want to target, regardless of whether they have the app or not, and does a check right at the start to see if it has the app. And if it does have the app, then it will install the update. If it doesn't have the app, it will market is not applicable. It's not, not applicable for that device. Very, very clever solution. I love the way they've done that. So I'm going to go ahead and choose deploy to Intune as not an update, so as a full application. And there it's, it says Mac deployment. It's going to take a little while for it to do that because it actually uploads that content to my Intune tenant. And the same with Slack. I'm just going to go ahead and do deployment and deploy to Intune. So those are now ready for me in my Intune tenant. Actually, let's just jump over to my Intune tenant take a quick look and down to Mac 
and then we'll find manage devices and then scripts pretty hard to find off the top of your head uh, so there it is we have uh, slack and we have team viewer you can see i've been doing this for, for a little while now um yeah today i have deployed slack and team viewer now those aren't actually assigned those are just put into my intune turn so let's see what happens when we actually push these i'm going to choose slack i will choose properties and that's what so it's using a shell script. Yeah, it's built this shell script for us. Uh, and like I mentioned, if, you, if you're gonna use the update only version, then it will put something at the top to make sure it's, it essentially doesn't do the rest if it's, if it's not applicable. So there's the shell script, fantastic. Scroll down to the bottom. All of this has been pre-configured for us. We don't need to, to edit this at all. We choose assignments and maybe add it to a group of devices that we want, or maybe even all devices in my environment. I've only got two. I think two or three I'm building another one right now and we'll choose save and there it is it's now being deployed from Intune to my Mac device when it has finished building this Mac I've got to my right hand side I will uh, I'll show you how that looks okay so that is Mac let's go back to packager and take a look at the other options we have Windows obviously so we have Windows here the list of Windows applications that are available in the Winget repo are absolutely it's a massive list right look look at the size of it we're still on a and we we haven't even um yeah okay a huge a huge list of applications and these are very easy to to deploy as you can imagine let's say Bellac advisor we'll add that and then the process is simply to choose deployment a few more options that we get here we could do a custom install string we can make it update only we can remove the version from the display name if you don't like that in you being shown to your users we can make it auto update and we can also choose advanced installer and use these psadt style commands here because it does wrap it in psadt and then simply a case of choosing deploy to intune i'll do that now so that one's over to intune but that is coming from the public winget repo which has a bit of a bad reputation for being um, unreliable or insecure and so there might be a reason you might want to use a private repo Intune doesn't have one of those uh, by default. Microsoft doesn't have one of those by default that is available within Intune. So if I choose add new app and in Windows, I can choose this slider here and it actually takes us over to the private hosted repo hosted by uh, Intune Packager. So what does that mean? Well, it's hosted by Packager. All of the infrastructure is Packager. And it means that in the event of a failure of the Winget, uh, any of the components that make Winget work, this isn't going to have that problem because this all functions directly with Intune. Let me show you what I mean. This, uh, let me scroll down to something that I haven't done before. So Evernote, for example. This is a private hosted application. I'm going to choose the plus button. It says it's now added and it says awaiting deployment. So I'm going to choose the three dots choose deployment and I'm happy with all of that you notice you do get this other slider uh, of number of days to wait that's a feature of the private repo where you could actually say yeah let's deploy the auto update but let's give it two days after the installation's finished uh, after the update's been released before you actually push it to the organization so I'm going to go ahead and choose deploy to Intune and it's added to queue give that a few moments it's going directly to Intune from Packager. So we'll give this a few seconds. That uh, Bellark Advisor has now finished, which means that Evernote should now start. It says deploying and uploading files. So that means that files are actually going to Intune. So it's not going to, when it goes, when the application gets deployed to my client, it's not coming from Winget, it's coming from Intune. The content will be using the standard Intune infrastructure, which will mean it can use all of the clever, um, all the clever features that make the transfer work quickly and share the content between peers and all that kind of clever stuff is all built in because we've used the private repo and because we've used Intune Packager rather than just using Winget directly from Intune. So, give us a few seconds to complete okay and then we'll just jump over to Intune again I'm going to this time go to applications because that's where it will be set 
in apps down here, all apps, windows, and I think it was Evernote, wasn't it? Evernote there is a Win32 app, not a WinGet app, it's a Win32 app, and it is actually packaged up in PowerShell App Deploy Toolkit because that means we can do all of those clever PowerShell App Deploy Toolkit things that we want to do, like closing applications or requiring certain things. And it mean, also means that we could have that interface that shows the user things are happening. So applications are installing, applications must be closed in order to complete this installation. All that kind of stuff is fully supported within Deploy Application, um, within PowerShell App Deploy Toolkit, I mean. So that's that. There is one final thing I wanted to show you, which is back in the Packager Library. We'll go to Dashboard. And custom applications are another early beta thing that's going on within Packager. And what that means is that we can click this and we can actually request applications. We can upload a executable or an MSI and they will package it up for us automatically using our um, custom command here. We could even request that they figure out the uh, the silent install command if we want. If it's easy to figure out, then they will. Otherwise, it will um, automatically package this up in PSADT for you and put it in Packager for you so that you can upload it to Intune. Really looking forward to how they develop this and make this a, an absolutely stellar feature. So I think you'll agree that for organizations who want to manage updates and apps, for Windows and Mac OS without relying on WinGet public repos or complex-ish solutions like Monkey. Um, this is a fantastic solution. For the, for the price that you pay, it is very, very good value. In fact, just speaking about price, actually, I didn't touch on that because I'm using the trial. I'll go back to Intune Packager and I'll just sign out so I can see the pricing. I'm using the 30 day free trial right now and pricing in US dollars. The version that supports Mac OS applications is the professional plan. So $69 per month for up to 1000 devices, no matter how many tenants you have, a uh, thousand devices. Very, very good value. That I did for, what is that? Uh, like seven cents per device. Uh, it's not a lot of, uh, it's not, not a very costly solution when you look at it from that kind of scale. And then the next one up, the business plan, supports more devices. So if you have more devices in the organization, two and a half thousand, for example, in this case, it supports multiple tenants and Mac OS applications as well. The other thing that the business plan supports, which is why I took the trial of business, is that it gives you the access to the private hosted repository and custom application, which I think are the, the stuff that right now is, is really top of mind for a lot of organizations who want that private repo, who don't want to rely on WinGet. But for me, in, in the the organizations that I support, really the pain I'm finding is Mac OS, and that's available in the Pro plan. So I'm gonna, once the trial is over, I'm gonna switch over to the Pro plan and uh, get access to that, to the Mac OS features. Give it a go in the trial, and let me know how it works out for you in the comments. See you next time.